Welcome back to Mr. Hassan's Maths Channel. I'm now answering question number seven from the October 2020 uh, Core Mathematics C12 International A Level LXL paper. This question is about logarithms and it is now relevant to the P2 um, papers. So I'm going to include this under my P2 um, collections um, and I'll label it as a P2 question. Now, uh, first, it says solve the equation, and they give you this equation three times a half to the power of p minus one equals 1.3. Give your answer to three decimal places. So here's a clue that we can't use the normal method of exponential equations, the fact we have to round the answer to three decimal places. But even if you try to do that, what well, you start off with, well, something like this, the first thing to do is always isolate this um, term which has the unknown. So I would divide both sides by three first to get rid of this three that's the first step so dividing both sides by three you get a half to the power of p minus one equals 1.3 divided by three okay um we could leave it like that we don't have to um i don't think that that rounds anything we could put one 13 over 30 if you want 13 over 30 that doesn't simplify so leave it like that okay so that's a half to the power of p minus one equals 13 over 30 now in p1 type of questions you got to this stage this would be able to be expressed as 2 to the power of something, because this can be expressed as 2 to the power of minus 1. However, in this case, um, you know, obviously we can't express this to two, as 2 to the power of something. So we're going to have to resort to another method of solving this exponential equation, which is by using what are called logarithms. And that's a topic of P2. So if we want to solve this using logarithms, what we have to do is we have to take the log to the same base, base of both sides. I have to log to the same base of both sides. Okay, I can take the log to any base I want to. It really doesn't matter. I can put I can take log to the base 10 of both sides, log to the base 5 of both sides, log to the base 8 of both sides. It really doesn't matter. As long as I take the log to the base of the same base of both sides, then I can proceed to answer the question. But what's the most sensible thing to do? Well, it's to take the log to the base of the number to which what we have to find is in the power. Whenever you're solving these exponential equations, what we're trying to find is in the power, in the exponent. Okay, it's half to the power of p minus 1. We want to find what p is, right? So if I take log to the base of this number to which the p is being raised in its power, then that's the easiest way, of de the easiest way to deal with this. So I'm going to take log to the base of a half of both sides. Okay. That's going to give me log to the base half of a half to the power of p minus 1. And this will equal log to the base half of 13 over 30. Okay, so now we're going to use the law of logarithms, which is called the power law. So if I have log to the base um, a of b to the power of c, I can use this, I can use the, the power law, which will make this become c times log to the base a of b, okay, using the power law, okay, so this becomes p minus 1 times log to the base half of half equals log to the base half of 13 over 30. Now, I'm doing this in a long-winded way to just for those who don't have a problem with logarithms, but they have a pro problem with logarithms, and I'm just trying to go through it step by step. In reality, what I would have done and what you can do, no problem, is go straight from here to writing p minus 1 equals log to the base a half of 13 over 30. That's really the next step I would write. You don't need to write all of this. This is just showing you how we end up with that. Because now we know that the log to the base of something of itself is always 1. Because the log to the base a of b equals, say, x means a to the power of x equals b. This is the base, this is the power, this is the, the answer, you could say, in index form, if you write it in index form. So a to the power of 1 equals a. This, that means log to the base of something of itself will always equal 1. So this, this thing equals 1. So you have p minus 1 times 1, which is p minus 1. And now we, we can find what p is. We can say p is equal to log to the base a half of 13 over 30 plus 1. Now I can put that in my calculator and find my answer, okay? So here we're using a couple of laws of logarithms. This is one of them, which is called the power law. And we're just using the fact 
that the log to the base of the same thing gives you one always. Okay, and this power law um, it can be understood from some of the other uh, laws um, of logarithms, why it becomes like that, but just quoting like that is fine. Um, in some other videos in my logarithms playlist, I've gone through a bit more detail about the reasons for, the, for that, and I, I might go through it in one of the subsequent videos which um, deals with that in the next few days before the exam. Now, we have to give the answer to three decimal places. So next is for us to put this in the calculator. So we got log to the base of a half. So you see now these new calculators have, you can put any base you want to. In the past, you couldn't. So that's why there was other methods uh, were used, especially some of the older books, you'll see other methods for such questions. But because we can put log to the base of any number we want, like here, log to the base of a half, 13 over 30, and then I'm gonna add one to the whole of that outside the bracket, and that gives us 2.20645, 2.20645, was that what it says? Yep, and we want to round it to 3SF, so it's going to be 2.21, 3SF, is it say 2, 2 or 3SF, or three de oh, 3 decimal places, be careful, it says 3 decimal places, okay, you should read the question, that's the third decimal place, so it's 2.206, there's the answer to 3 decimal places. Okay, so there's the answer there. As I mentioned there, could have, we could have done it in another way. We could have, for example, taken, at this stage here, we could have taken the log to any power we want. I could have taken log to the base 10. I could have taken log to the base 8, to log to the base 4. I would still get the same answer. And then I'll show you here, just for, for your information, how we'd end up with the same answer. Supposing we started off with the same problem, a half to the power of p minus 1 is equal to 13 over... 30. 13 over 30. Okay, All right. Now, supposing I took log to the base 10. Now, log to the base 10, you don't have to write the 10 here. It means log to the base 10. Okay, if you just say log, it means log to the base 10. So you have this is equal to log to the base 10 of 13 over 30. So then I'll have using the power law again, p minus 1 times log to the base 10 of a half equals log to the base 10 of 13 over 30. So now I can say p minus 1 is equal to log to the base 10 of 13 over 20 divided by log to the base 10 of a half. So then I'm going to have p equals, I'll find this and add 1 to it. So I'll show you how we get the same thing. We'll have log to the base 10. Now in fact, when you do log to the base 10, you can just use this button here. Log, this button means log to the base 10. Okay, 13 over 30. That's a 30 here, not a 20. 13 over 30. Okay, divided by log. And you're going to have here a half. 1 over 2. Okay, and that gives you that plus 1, because we have got minus 1 here. And you see it gives us exactly the same answer as before, 2.206 to 3SF. So it really doesn't matter what base you take the log to. Okay, and from here what you could do is go straight from here. Um, well, you'd have to, I guess, show this step here, because it doesn't disappear there. In this case, because you've taken log to the base of half, you know log to the base of half of a half is 1. So you'll end up with p minus 1 equals log to the base of half 13 over 30. You can go switch. You can go straight from this step to that step with no problem whatsoever. Okay, because you're taking log to the same base as this number, that's going to give you 1, and that power, that will become the power. The power will become the multiple, sorry. Okay, so p minus 1 equals log to the base of half of 13 over 30, and you can continue. All right, so there's the answer to part one. I went into a bit more detail because I know this is a topic that a lot of students do have some problems with. It's a bit of an alien type of topic for them, um, but it's not really that difficult. You have to just remember a few simple rules and procedures and you'll be fine. Now for part two. It says, find the exact value of x for which log to the base 4 of 2x plus 2 to the log 2 to the log to the base 4 of x equals 8. So when you want to solve a log equation, Okay, now what we want to do is we want to combine the log terms into one term. 
So on this side you have the log terms. We can combine them into one term by using the addition law. So you have log to the base of a of b plus log to the base a of c gives you log to the base a of b times c. So when you have two logarithms that are added together, you can combine them together using the addition law where these two are multiplied. It's very similar to the laws of indices where you have to, when you're multiplying two numbers in index form, you add the powers. Okay, in this case, when you're adding two num logarithms with the same base, you can multiply that number inside here. Okay, now, the problem is we've got this 2 here that's multiplying the log to the base 2 for x. So what we want to do first is get rid of this 2. So again, we can use the power law. We know that 2 log to the base 4 of x can be written as log to the base 4 of x squared. Okay, I can raise this to the power of 2. Uh, as we learned with that law we had, log, two, log to the base um, a of b to the power of c is c times log to the base a of b. Okay, so that's the law we're using here to write this as the power. And we can understand how this works because we know that log to the base 4 of x squared is the same as log to the base 4 of x times x. And using the same law but the other way around, this is log to the base 4 of x plus log to the base 4 of x, which is the same as 2 times log to the base 4 of x, because there's two of them. So we can see that this and this are the same thing. All right, you're working that way. So that's, that's like you can understand why this law actually works, this power law. Okay, so these are just side points. I just want to just give you some background for those of you who think this is a really alien type of top topic. I'm just showing you some of the, the laws of logarithms and how they work. So why does a power law work like this and whatever. So now we can proceed. Let's just say the first thing you got to do is get rid of these multiples. When you want to combine logarithms together, you don't want multiples there. So I have log to the base 4, 2x. Okay, plus, and this would be log to the base 4 of x squared. Okay, it's only the x that squared, not the whole logarithm that squared. It's very important, just the x that squared, and that's equal to 8. Now we can use the law of logarithms where we can combine them together once you don't have the multiples there. Okay, we can say this is log to the base 4 of, we can use 2x multiplied by x squared, and this is equal to 8. So that gives us log to the base 4, log to the base 4 of 2x cubed is equal to 8. Now we can use the definition of logarithms that log to the base p of q equals r means that p to the power of r equals q. This is the base, this is the power, this is the result. So this is like 4 to the power of 8 is equal to 2x cubed. Okay, so I can say therefore x cubed is equal to 4 to the power of 8 divided by 2. I could stick that in my calculator and find my answer. I'm going to do it in a slightly uh, better way because I can say that this is 2 to the power of 2 to the power of 8 over 2. Okay, this is not necessarily what I'm doing here, but I'm just being a bit extra. So x cubed is equal to 2 to the power of 16 over 2 to the power of 1. So x cubed is 2 to the power of 15. Therefore, x is the cube root of the cube root of 2 to the power of 15, which means basically you have to divide the power by 3. Uh, so x equals 2 to the power of 5. So x equals 2 to the power of 5, which is 32. So there's the answer for this question. As I said, I could have gone straight away and just put this in my calculator here. And let's just check that we've done it correctly. So I could have put the cube root of, the cube root of um, 4 to the power of 8 over 2. So 4 to the power of 8 divided by 2, and it gives us 32, exactly what we got. All right, so you could have just done that straight away in your calculator. There's no problem. X equals 32. That's fine. Okay, so there's the answer to question 7, part 2. Okay, with a bit of background information about logarithms for those of you who find it a bit of a strange alien type of topic. Uh, it's nothing to be afraid of. Just simple rules that we got to learn. Okay, that's the power law. That's the addition law. You also have the subtraction law, which is log to the base A, B minus log to the base. The same base A of C is log to the base A of B divided by C. Okay, as long as they have the same base, the bases must be the same for us to use this law. Okay, that's supposed to be log to the base A there. Yeah, so that's very important for us to know those laws of logarithms. 
Um, I hope that was clear. Thank you for watching. Other questions about this particular topic can be found in the playlist that will appear in this area over here. Other questions to do with logarithms. Um, so I, I mean, the other questions to do with this paper on this paper, October 2020, C12 can be found in the playlist over here. Other questions on this topic of logarithms can be in the play can be found in the playlist over here. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. Don't forget to look at the description of the video to find other links that might be useful for you and your friends. Thank you for watching and see you soon.